Hey, good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Monday, February the 27th, 2023. It is 6.05 a.m. and the birthday of one Ethan Zachary Cothin. Happy birthday, bud. Love you the mostest. And uh, this morning we find ourselves in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 and a couple of other places. I'll just uh, recite those for you. So just put your finger at Romans chapter 5, verse 8. We'll go from there. And the title of this morning's Breakfast Biscuit is, I Rest My Case. I Rest My Case. So, uh, let me tell you this before we start. Uh, yesterday was a phenomenal day <clears throat> at SeaTex Church. We had a house full of people. We keep putting more chairs in every week, and people keep coming and sitting in them. And that's the point. That's what we pray for. That's what we ask God for. And we are so grateful. And then had a magnificent crowd uh, for the Discover SeaTex lunch uh, after that. And it was just a joy-filled day, and we are on our way to the first anniversary next Sunday. So if you're not otherwise occupied, we would love to have you celebrate with us our first anniversary as a church next Sunday on March the 5th at our home in the Holodome at 10 a.m. Uh, it's going to be a hoot. Oh, it's for those of you that have gotten used to me uh, giving you the weather for the day, it's just going to be muggy. So <laughs> I think we could leave it at that for about the next nine months. So, how about that? This morning, we turn our attention to a breakfast biscuit entitled, I Rest My Case. Uh, yesterday, I spoke on, are you serious about sharing your faith? And there was one verse that I just never get to spend enough time on, so we're going to take another swing at it this morning, and that is Romans 5, 8. But God, King James commendeth, other translations, more modern translations, God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, at the end of the day, that right there is the difference between Christianity and any other belief system. Most all other belief systems, you have to get yourself straightened out uh, before the deity will look upon you favorably. God Almighty in his grace demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The most singularly graphic instance of such that I have ever seen, known, or heard about, read about, comes at the actual crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Jesus is hanging on the cross. I think it's reasonable to understand that the same soldiers uh, who were gambling for his clothing were the ones who scourged him and the ones who nailed him to that tree and dropped it in the hole and left him there. And they mocked him. And they gambled for his clothing at his feet while he was dying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot fathom the feelings that I and my sinful human flesh would have for the people that scourged me and crucified me and were gambling for my clothing. But this is where God breathes new life into this wretched world that we ruined with sin. Jesus Christ looked down at those gambling for his clothing, those who had scourged him, those who had crucified him and who were gambling for his clothes and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If you needed uh, the epitome of Christian love and the grace of God, I don't know anything more to tell you than that. I would rest my case at that. And it is the epitome of that which Jesus spoke about uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, be ye perfect, therefore, as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's not talking about moral perfection. It's talking about complete in loving those that don't love you first. And I, I love the phrase from the old King James, God sends his reign on the just and the unjust. And he is working and moving to call hearts that rebelled against him, sinned against him, spit in his face, back to a relationship with him by grace through faith. Oh, and there's one more thing, Romans 5, 8, uh, and then Father forgive them for they know not what they do. And then I heard this, uh, actually I read this not too long ago, and as many times happens with the human memory, which is faulty, uh, I started botching it by omitting part of it. So what I've been saying for a while that uh, serves to, to represent Christianity very, very well is the short form, which was wrong, but it's still really good. So here's the short form that I've been quoting. Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those he martyred. 
Can you just can you just grip that for one minute? Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those that he martyred. Well, turns out getting ready to talk to you this morning, I got my Googler out and uh, and plugged it in, and it'll tell you where something came from so quick it'll make your head spin. The actual quotation, not omitting anything or vulgarizing anything, says this: the Apostle Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those he martyred because that's how the gospel works. That's how the gospel works. Loving those that hate you, praying for those that persecute you, being good to those that despitefully use you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what turns the world on its head. That's what changes your insides. Always has been, always will be. So at the end of the day, if you want to be like Jesus, there's how you do it. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for my brothers and sisters that turn aside with me today to uh, begin their day by honoring you and seeking your face. Father, we thank you for demonstrating your love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Father, we thank you for those magnificent, noble, kind, gracious, forgiving words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Lord, we thank you that it is the truth, even though it's not in the scripture, that Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those who martyred, because that's how the gospel works. Lord, help us today not to be eye for eye or tooth for tooth, but to send our reign on the just and the unjust to love those that despitefully use us for your glory, for the blessing of your people, and for the beauty of the gospel. Lord, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, and may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you right back here, bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.